Welcome to RPG Elite, where we put the RP back into RPG, giving you tools and tips on how to make your RPG experience more immersive and enjoyable. Thank you for coming to the channel. My name is Sir of Shiloh, and if this is your first time coming to the channel, welcome. And for all you returning people, what's up my fellow leets? I'm back once again with one more video. This one's gonna be a little shorter. Now, if you like the video, then you know what you gotta do first. You gotta smash the like button. So go all the way through, and if you like it, smash the like button. That is just the way that I say that. There is something wrong with me, but don't worry about it. We cool. If you really like everything that's being said here and you've gotten some value out of the videos that I've been posting, then go ahead and click the subscribe button. And along with that, click the notification bell so you will be informed every time I come out with a new video. I try to come out with a new video once a week. Uh, sometimes though, I might come out with one twice a week. It just depends. But this week we got a rather short video and I'm gonna be talking about how to make custom icons for Foundry VTT. Now I say Foundry VTT because that is my virtual tabletop of choice, but this process is going to work for any virtual tabletop that you are playing in. So uh, even though I'm dragging a whole lot of Foundry people over here with the thumbnail, uh, this actually works for anybody who's playing in anything. So whether you're playing in Astral or Fantasy Grounds or Let's Roll or something like that, it'll work for those as well. It's very simple, just like most of the things that I post here. This is very simple and I don't want to spend too much time. So let's go ahead let's get started and get into this i'm going to show you how to make your own custom icons not only for foundry vtt but also for whatever vtt system that you happen to be running all right let's get it going one two boom okay so here we are in foundry and i am starting something new today i have a new recording a screen recording system that i'm using so i was using obs before but today i am using the geforce experience uh, screen capture and so you guys let me know uh, does which one looks better so you can go back and look at any of my other videos they've all been done in obs and then compare it to this video and see which one you like and then let me know in the comments below all right so right now let me first explain what I mean by icons. I'm going to open up Annabelle here. And as you can see, this is a Numenera sheet, my Numenera sheet. And as you can see, there's all these different icons down here on the side for the skills or even for the abilities down here as well. Ooh, I move a lot of my stuff. That's why it's not showing up. <laughs> um, or even for the equipment over here. Okay. So you might be saying, okay, so where some of these are actually in Foundry. So I think that one is in Foundry. This one's in Foundry. I think that one's in Foundry, but this isn't, that isn't, and that's not. So how did I get these others? Well, some of them, not none of those that I just showed you, but some of the ones that I use, uh, they actually are the f part of the free ones that I showed you last week. And if you haven't gone and seen that video, uh, hit that card up below and to hit that one to see number one where to find all these free icons for your VTT. Now, this obviously is for GMs mostly, but if you got some cool players who like to do this kind of thing, then you can enlist them to do this very same thing as well. But this is mostly for GMs. So how I create my own custom icons um, is a very simple process. Now, why would I want to create my own custom icons? Well, because it's just dope. That's why you create this unique user experience for your players. Like if you're playing in another campaign that's using Foundry VTT and that campaign is using the same icons, there's nothing wrong with it because Foundry comes with some very good icons, but you kind of lose that individuality of moving into a new campaign. You say, oh, I'm in the same campaign or using the same icons. Oh, okay. So if you want to really make your campaign stand out a little bit, 
then one way to do it is to get other icons to make it stand out a little bit. The other is to actually tweak with the sheet to make that look different, but we've done all that, right? So let me go and move on here because I'm doing this kind of raw, okay? I'm not doing any editing or anything like that. So I'm doing this kind of raw as far as the screen capture portion of this. All right, so I want to make an icon for Numenera, okay? Even though I'm not playing Numenera anymore, I'm playing the One Ring. I told you guys about that, and we'll be talking about that probably in the next few videos because I got the new one coming out, second edition, yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, let's go ahead and let me show you how I go about doing this. So I go to two places, number one, to start looking for things that look like they might be cool to use as icons. So, and I'll just show them to you real quick here. My number one place is ArtStation, ArtStation.com. This has got some of the best looking art out there for the type of stuff that we do. Pixabay is another one. It's got free stuff if you get into pictures and stuff like that, but it has some illustrations as well that you can look at and you can go there and they're all free, free to use however you want to use it. So Pixabay is another good place, but I'm going to show you ArtStation because this is my favorite place and I'm doing, like I said, I'm doing this live, so I don't know what I am about to make, but let's say I want to do some uh, you know, I want to do some sci-fi stuff. So I'm just going to put in science fiction uh, just to make my life simple and see what I can come up with. All right. Uh, because Numenera is part science, science fantasy type of deal. OK, well, that pulled up. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. All right. Let's go ahead and go science fiction and see what happens. OK, we pulled up quite a bit of some cool stuff here. All right. All right. Um, and I'm looking to make an icon. Hmm. Let's see what we can come up with. Hell, can we? Can we? Hmm. Man, I've passed by a couple of them. Just want to see what. Ooh, this would be a sweet looking automaton. Oh, yeah, that would be nice right there. That'd be real nice. OK, so one thing, let, let's say that I like this and I want to make this as like an automaton in Numenera. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a, a screenshot of this portion right here. Now, alternatively, you could download it because these are downloadable, by the way. You can go ahead and download them if you just like them and you want to do some other things with them. That's fine. So you can download them here. But for me, what I like to do is whoops, I like to go press your windows key and the shift key and the s key and this is going to pop up and i like to go and take a screenshot probably take a screenshot this is going to be close uh, i could probably clean that up so let me let me take a screenshot of that okay so the next thing that i have this screenshot and now i need to paste this into some kind of graphic manipulation software now if you've got you know you got adobe photoshop uh you can use that if you got paint shop you can use that i personally use my old tried and true that i've been using for years and years and years gimp and i'm going to go ahead and just put that in there hmm that's pretty good I, yeah, that's actually not too bad um, as far as the squareage. And I'll let you know what I'm talking about in a second. Now, I you've got this little thing down here in the corner. It's not the best, but it's not the worst, right? So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to look at the dimensions. So I'm going to go to image properties down here at the bottom under image. And I'm just going to look and see what it is. And it's 441 by 438. Okay. So if I want to make an icon out of this, uh, normally I would like to go 512 by 512. However, I can't with this one because if you increase the size, then you definitely are going to lose resolution. So you don't want to do that. You want to decrease it and you want to do it by a multiple of 128. So you're either going to make your icons 128 by 128 
or 256 by 256 or 512 by 512. Okay. Uh, the bigger, the better. However, this one here, I'm going to have to change. So I'm going to scale my image. So I'm going to go to image right here. I'm going to scale the image and I'm going to make sure that this right here is unchecked because as you can see, this is not exactly the same in order to get it exactly the same. You have to unlink it right over here. And I'm going down, of course, to 256 by 256, but that's fine. And I'm going to push scale it. And that's pretty good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to export it. But I'm going to do something um, like in Foundry. And let me go to my new Monero one. Here it is. You can save that as a PNG, but I wouldn't. Okay. Because you want to try to make the file sizes as small as possible. So I always try to save. I didn't do it here, but I try to save my files as WebP files. That's just what Foundry uses. And it just is a Google extension. And it's just a web uh, graphics extension that kind of compresses the file, make it as small as possible without losing resolution. And I'm going to call this ah, long legged. Let's say long legged auto maton. Let's call it that. And I'm going to save it here. Export it. And put yes. All right. Now I'm going to go back to Foundry. And let's say I want to create that as an icon. All of these over here is where all of my icons are and all the ones that I have made. And this is going to fall into the category of none of these. <laughs> so, um, let's, oh man, I'm just going to make another artifacts. Okay. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on this little feather right here and I'm going to make it into an artifact. Make sure it says artifact. And I'm going to say long legged automaton create click here. I'm going to go to the place where I saved it and I know where that is. And you should know the place where you save your things as well. I'm going to click this on so I can actually see it. And I am going to click that and I'm going to bring it in, bring it in, baby, bring it in. And there is the picture. And I'm going to just close that up. And if I wanted to give this to one of my characters, so let's say I wanted to give this to Galdar. And I'm going to go over here to his Numenera and I'm going oops, move this over a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to say that this is an artifact. I'm just going to click on this long legged automaton. I'm going to bring it over here and he has it long legged automaton. Now, nobody has that particular icon. Why? Because I've just gone ahead and I created a custom one and it's that simple. It is that simple to create custom icons again. It's a couple things that you want to remember. Number one, make sure they're either 128 by 128, 512 by 512, or 256 by 256. I kind of inverted that, didn't I? And you want to make them WebP files just to save on the size. But it's as simple as going to any photo manipulation program like Adobe or GIMP, putting it in there, saving it, and then importing it into Foundry as a C item, as I've just done. That simple. And you can use this not only for something like Numenera, but just for any RPG that you are playing in Foundry. C items are pretty much made the same way. Um, they might be made a little different because of the system, but they're pretty much made that way. And you can use those C items. As you can see here, 
I had a lot of them. This is another one I got over there from the art station. Um, this one is another one I got from art station. This is called Slug Splitter. Uh, a lot of these I just went over there and I got some. This one here I actually got from the Numenera book. So there's another place for you to go. If you have a PDF version of the book and there's some cool stuff in there, use that. Use those. And again, make sure you've got the right dimensions for it. But I have used so many different things. Or you can just go on Google, Google something and be like, hey, that's a cool looking graphic and see if there's something in there that you can kind of square off to a, like a to where the squares are all on the, you know, equal just about you're not probably not going to get it perfect but then you can open it up and see what the properties are and see which one you want to make it as you can make it as a 256 by 256 or 512 by 512 if the dimensions go over 512 if they don't then you want to make it 256 by 256 if the properties or the image properties don't go over 256 then you want to make the smallest one which is 128 by 128 that'll do you in a pinch and that's what works folks that's how i make my icons very simple not rocket science so there you have it folks it's a very simple process as you could see i kind of went through that raw like i said i was going to but it's because it's so simple it's a very simple process and you can make your experience in whatever vtt that you choose to use a unique user experience now of course doing this does take you going and doing some little extra leg work. Um, but if you have the time to do it and you really want to make that unique user experience special for your players, then you can go ahead and just make your own custom icons and have some of the coolest and dopest looking icons out there because you've got some great art by people who want to share it that are online. So there it is, folks, how to make custom icons in Foundry VTT or for any other virtual tabletop that you may be running your rpgs in well i think that's about it folks and until next time i think it's about that time to say happy gaming